the center puzzle of all the slabs. So it's part of the slab puzzles? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. We've defeated their armies. Where the hell are they coming from? Attack him. Strange. They actually had to attack for a change. Is they're immune to divine magic? Burn her down.
So much mind control. Poor shit. Come on, dude. We're gonna lose to a mind control. No, we're not. She has mind control too. Fantastic. Come on, if we... That's just wrong. Oh. Whoops. Did not realize. Camp. Beautiful. Yet another obstacle. Well, so much for buffing. Yeah. 
the wrong mongrel. Jeez. Give everyone true sight, true seeing. Damn you! Bam! <laughs> Did you see that? Simply business. Statue of a chicken, right in an artful and absolutely non insulting manner. If you found this note, I want you to know art is pain. My name is Floggy, the sculptor. In the moment I was born, the goddess of Shaylin struck me with the most horrible curse of all. She gave me a craving for art. I became a sculptor's apprentice, and when I was seven, I became a sculptor's apprentice when I was seven. And by 25, I'd already become a reputable and ambitious debutante. Alas, this didn't bring me any happiness. My first piece of art, a composition called The Last Aslanti, takes a step into the lands of the Axis, caused a stir. And most reactions were shouts of indignation. For most reason, for, for some reason, the public decided that my depiction of Aroden bore a striking resemblance to the chairman of Absalom's Grand Council, Lord Wars. They accused me of being corrupt and subjected me to a shameful beating right in the grand opening. I attributed this calamity to my youthful inexperience, and I intended to turn the tables. To avoid further accusations, I chose a topic that was pronouncedly distant from Absalom's realities. So I depicted Tian, goddess warrior, Shizuru, how could I have known that so many people from TNZ live in Absalom? Why did none of them warn me that the name of the goddess is actually spelled and pronounced Shizuru, or that misspelling is a great blasphemy? How could I even suspect that one of my audience would be outraged by the excessive velocity of my statue? The other would be insulted by its extreme femininity and the rest would brand me a parasite for trying to make money off an of undisguised cultural appropriation. Feeling desperate, I turned to abstractionism, and when the time had come to give a name to my statue, I chose a random set of letters, consonants only, but caused, but caused even more trouble. That very night, a bunch of strangers, clad in hood and black robes, broke into my house, threatened me with daggers, and demanded that I never again try to depict their mysterious deity or mention one of its secret names. <sighs> Having fa failed at gaining glory among the educated and sophisticated public, I fled north to Socorus. There, among the simple people, my talent could finally blossom. I showed them wooden sculptures, whose crude grotesqueness em emanated strength and primordial power of the earth. 
earth things they were supposed to understand very poor sap just bad luck all around so they beat me up for good measure and kicked me out of their settlement right after they broke my favorite chisel and spat in my travel bag I mean they, they I mean they could have done worse to your travel bag until this day I have no idea what I did to offend them by that time I had already learned not to ask pointless questions the desperation of it all made me feel bitter and stubborn but fate challenged me so I accepted the challenge I had found my mission one to create a statue that would insult no one after several weeks of contemplation I decided to sculpt a chicken yes a simple chicken what could be offensive about chickens they are yellow and they chirp there's definitely nothing bad about that oh I couldn't have been more wrong a week after my sculpture was showcased to the audience a group of grim looking people came and fell to their knees before it they pronounced my statue to be an idol of the deity they worshipped an infernal duke Iozero? It turned out there is a duke of hell whose unholy symbol is a chicken more and more cultists came to see my sculpture every day and then another kind of public arrived tough knights with long swords who chopped all the admiral admirers of my talent into pieces after they were done with the slaughter they started searching for the person who created the blasphemous chicken for me you can't catch a break at all I fled taking my unfortunate creation with me I dragged the statue as far as I could and left it in the wilderness I hope no one finds it here although since you're reading this my hope was futile in this case you should know art is pain beware of the people who worship chickens and equally beware of those who hate them and here is the main thing I was trying to I was trying to say I didn't didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings with this statue Foggy the sculpture sculptor <sighs> poor bastard man was just trying to make a living doing what he loved here we go yeah, I assumed that was one of the Kickstarter things. Is that all that's here? Poor Floggy. think we have anywhere else we need to explore other than is or eyes or however you pronounce it we just have to do puzzles bring Ninio with us. But we haven't leveled him forever. No idea what to give her at this point.
I don't even remember what spells that I really mainly have on her. I know she has illusion. I mean, doesn't point blank shot like imprecise shot help with like ray attacks? I can't remember if like fire spells are evocation or conjuration. Hmm. Or like lightning and things of that nature. for polar ray sea mantle this is a defensive ability conjurations are things like
would that be not recommended? I understand the game doesn't recommend I use it, <laughs> but why? It, it, it's a buff that buffs your resistance to saving throws. Why would that be a not recommended? It doesn't make any sense to me. I know you don't have to follow the game recommendations. It's just, it's weird to me. I was just trying to understand it is all. It's like, no, you can't raise resist. If you raise resist, we can't fuck you. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hmm. I always hate trying to... Decide on how to level a, a Ninio. Especially with the Trickster's ability to just give them any feats whatsoever without prerequisites. if they're in melee range.
Should have just made her an alchemist. That would have been easier. It's not like we really use her that much. You create two colossal sized masses of rock, dirt, and stone and slam them together against a single creature between them. Uh. I like that. mind blank. Tsunami. Sure. Mass icy prison. Prison. She even has the spell. Does she have toughness? Let's give her that. Get weird with it. Shave. Improved abundant casting. Greater abundant casting.
spell penetration. Maybe last stand. Sure, more blur. More haste. We might go ascendant element electricity. Ah, conflicting school. That's why it doesn't recommend it. So that was a waste. that now. You can still use it, but it's not worth the spell slots.
in my opinion. Especially if you're on a character we really don't use that often. Spell slots. While we have her, let's work on some haste scrolls. Nope, not enough reagents. Just kidding. Demons wait. We'll win this one way or the other. Jesus Christ, dude. All right, let's go to these other ones. Make sure we've completed all the rest. Yes, completed. Don't think we've completed all of them. complete so it's going to be this one down here solve it.
the notes. Grasp of Devotion plus five holy mace. not right. Alright, let's get everyone off the playing field. They're blocking my view. You are my favorite aid. this up. Looking at the orientation wrong. save before we get the last piece in. So we 
don't know what's gonna happen. There's a secret passage where we go. Yeah. Kagal. One most worthy, you are late. The Sphinx's voice is tranquil and unchanging. Her unmasked her masked gaze stares out indifferently somewhere above your head. We've been waiting for you for a long time. But the age of the Earthfall has ended, and along with it, our patience. The secrets of creation will remain unknown. Leave. Hey, how come? demand you reveal the secrets of creation to me right here and now and I'm not leaving until you do who is here you're not the one most worthy you're not the one for whom we've waited how dare you intrude in, into our lair and try to discover our secrets you don't seem to see me are you blind we've been waiting here far too long we've fallen into disrepair who are you we are the will of great Areshkagal, the demon lord, the faceless sphinx. Saturn of worship. Thank you for the follow. Careful here, here? Why? We are a projection of her will. We are the gatekeeper entrusted with opening the door to eternity for the one who is most worthy. Who are you waiting for here? We are waiting for the one who is most worthy, the one who will solve the puzzles, the one who will re who refused to follow their kin, the one who survived the Earthfall, the one whom we will give our mask and name our as our avatar. One wrong action here could end badly. That's why we saved. Trickster. Actually, I am the one who is most worthy. I've just lost my voice recently. Cough, cough. Slow down. The one she is waiting for is the storyteller. That's kind of what I assumed. Based on uh, the whole Earthfall storyline. So do we need to go back and speak to storyteller? And then come back with storyteller you have no idea all right we'll, we'll check that out never be, never been able to bother finishing this quest okay so we'll go speak to storyteller we did find another note even though we seemingly finished his storyline without it but maybe they maybe it's not finished oh this way I mean most likely we'll end up going the trickster path because we select that every time that's an option. Patient and nonviolent. Okay. Let's go speak to Storyteller. Granted, no idea what you get for the trickster and the like. 
the mass you can get is ridiculous. Okay. Let's see what he says after we give him this page we found. I need to get another drink. One second. One of the masks from that quest grants you a 50% concealment for wearing it, ignoring all effects. That would negate concealment. Yeah, that's kind of OP. I like it. I found a page. Another page. We've already learned my entire story. Could it be? There is another. This can't be true, but still, I see it. Another story hidden in these pages will open before us. Three paces to the left, there's a stone wall. Three paces to the right, there's another stone wall. Beneath me, there's a, a rough stone floor. Around me, there's only stone, cold, like the hearts of my captors. Caught, imprisoned. Here in this black hole, this dungeon with no sky, no sun, and forever and ever, until I die. Jagged nails scratching the stone wall. Rumbled teeth biting through lips, an inhumane roar, clawing at out, clawing out of a throat. The animal they turned me into is roaring. Enough. Stop, Arilu. Remember who you are and what you need to do. My will is strong. It's the only thing I have left. I force my hand down. I unclench my teeth. I stop the growl. I overcome the animal I'm turning into. Even here, even now, I won't give up. I have a plan. Insane, dangerous, life-saving. I will carry it out. I will summon the demons of the abyss. I will destroy this dungeon, along with all of Socorus. And perhaps all of Galarian, too. What is this place? This is a fortress that resists enemies on the inside, not on the outside. A prison for those whose abilities have not been approved by the priest of Palura, the shamans of Storasta, or the chiefs of Iz. This is the threshold, and I am imprisoned in its deep and deepest dungeon. What were you imprisoned for? For what is... For what is the wrong question? The right question is why? Because all the chiefs, priests, druids, and shamans are afraid of one woman, Arilu Vorlesh. So afraid that their knees tremble, their hands stands, hair stands on end, and their teeth chatter. They're afraid for a reason. My wardens don't know my secret. My cell measures six paces wide by six, pace, six long, but it is, in fact, much more spacious. I bite through a vein on my wrist and let, let my blood wash over the stone floor of my cage. The falling drops form a black spot, opening away to my subspace, a small corner of the abyss, my secret haven in my laboratory. I put pressure on the bleeding wound. I wouldn't want to die, no matter how much it would release, please my captors, and I step into the portal. I sit at the table and look through my treasures once again. I know all of them. I know every detail and flaw. They are my route to salvation and my hope. I found them many years ago in the ruins of a well-hidden tower behind a secret door in the laboratory of an ancient mage. A heart-sized uncut crystal burning with purple flame and a blank page torn from an old notebook. Oh, how much I'd like to look into this notebook, read all of it, but one page was enough. What's up, Shinobi? How's it going?
I run my hand over the page. I feel shreds of the words and thoughts of an ancient mage. Someone who walked the same path I'm walking. There's much I don't understand. Many things escape me. I hear echoes of frightened names. Baphomet, Discari, Naticula, and Kinney. Who is Kinney? It doesn't matter. These shreds of knowledge were enough for me to devise my own method of opening a rift between Galarian and the Abyss. Not to escape. Oh no. I can escape now. It's not hard with my abilities. But to fight. For my future and for the future of my child, whom my captors killed in front of me. And if Galarian is doomed to perish in my struggle, so be it. I wonder if the ancient mage who wrote the book to which this page belongs would be proud of me. Am I proud? I want to say that I am not. That I am ashamed that my work has been used to help open the world wound. And still, there is a glimmer of pride in me. Pride that my work proved a success. Erasmo was right, wasn't she? This knowledge should have been destroyed from the start. You're right. Your discoveries laid the groundwork for the world wound. They should have been destroyed. Now I see it too. When a deity gives you advice, you should listen to it, even if it seems wrong. My lesson cost Galarian many years of pain and suffering. And still... Please take it. It no longer belongs to me. It's part of another. Even more frightening and dangerous book. Destroy it or keep it. It doesn't concern me anymore. Okay. Yep, the Codex. So, place the blank page from the storyteller's book between the two halves of the lexicon. The blank play page obtained from the storyteller fits seamlessly between the two halves of the lexicon as if it was always meant to be there. As if this page had once been found by Rilu Vorlesh, who saw it, its hidden potential and used the storyteller's knowledge, lost in the depths of time, as the foundation for developing the process to open the world wound. After a moment, the words begin to appear on the once blank page, words that have shifted there from the two, two halves of the book. These words form phrases that reveal the process of the precious secrets of the lexicon of paradox. The transformation process was initially con conceived by me as, power, as a power source. However, in the course of my experiments, I learned that it's partially, it partially solves the problem of, of the slow demise of the key. The power that manifests after transformation. I'm almost certain the mortals will devise some overblown name for it, like mythic or legendary serves as an effective shield against the poisonous influence of the wound. Problems arrived when it, when it is used. When the power is expended, for instance, in combat, the shield is weakened, and the infiltrating emanations of the wound strike the key, wounding it and robbing it, robbing it of its life force. This problem is immaterial in comparison to the second. The power increase after transformation is not infinite, nor is its its protective effect. I managed to stave off the death of the key for several decades. But even despite achieving the extreme level of power bestowed by the transformation, at some point the key's protection will weaken. The world wound will, will prevail and consume the soul of the key. I must admit that my research has come to a dead end. I have developed the power of the transformation process to its very limit. And I have failed to find a way to completely cure the wound's effects, except for extreme measures. At this, the secret writings of Arilu Vorlesh come to an end. Whatever their significance, their contents will undoubtedly be of use to the commander in the future. As if reading the commander's thoughts, the lexicon separates into two halves once more. Okay. So close to level 20.
So be interesting if we could hand him the lexicon and see what he has has to say about that. Let's go back to the heart and see if that gives us different dialogue, maybe. We haven't done the masks of the like gone back to the starting point of this quest with the four masks yet either. It's hard to save it here. Here we go. attack Guess you can't talk because you backed off. Well, I guess we're reloading then, because yeah. Quick save. Sphinx, Sphinx ponders in a confused silence. The silence drags on. Long minutes pass in silence. Wait some more. Wait some more. Wait some more. The one most worthy is here, but it is not the one most worthy who speaks. How can the most worthy one speak if they are not here? How can the voice of the most worthy one be present if the most worthy one is absent? Broken. 
and here I was hoping it would tell me the mysteries of the universe. Well, what's done is done. Looks like I have to unravel them on my own. The Sphinx silently disappears before your eyes as if she was never here. Hello. You look at the ghost expectantly, but he is silent and motionless. He seems stunned, unable to comprehend what has happened, and suddenly the ghost springs into action. With one swift mo movement, he grabs the mask and rips it off his face. This is the first time you've seen the ghost's face. He looks pale and haggard, but his dark eyes burn with stubbornness and strength. I've been imprisoned by that cursed sphinx for thousands of years, but now I'm finally free. There'll be no more encounters with wandering travelers. I'll never again have to lure them into a trap with the promise of great mysteries. I must reward you for my freedom, adventurer. Although I've been dead for thousands of years, I was once a thief, and a good thief always has some loot stashed away. Take this as a token of my gratitude. Mask of the most worthy. You did not gain access to the secrets of creation, but you have given me the gift of freedom. I was once known as Kenny the Stubborn, Thief of Secrets. Kenny. Thank you for releasing me from my imprisonment. Wait, so you're Kenny? Kenny the Thief? You're the one who escaped enslavement of the Cyclopses and hid from, hid, them, hid from them in the abyss? An elf called the Storyteller told me about you. He said you were his friend. Storyteller. I do not know anyone by the, that goes by that name, but I believe I know the person you're talking about. My friend, the one I betrayed. Can it be that he still lives? What you say is true. I'm sad that we will not have the chance to meet. My time in the material plane is coming to an end. I can feel my life slipping away. Why did you, why did you betray him? Why did you deceive him and try to steal his secrets? It's difficult to explain. I'm running out of time. The ghost bows his head. He hesitates for a moment, folding his arms across his chest before he continues in a low voice. He, is, he was obsessed with his rift experiments. Elves are accustomed to the idea of moving between planes and traveling to different worlds. After all, elves are not native to Galarian. They originated elsewhere. That's why elves find it so difficult to understand the disastrous consequences that can result from opening permanent rifts and portals. Of course, you know all about such cons consequences. After all, you live in a world where the world wound already ex exists. But I was trying to prevent such a catastrophe. I implore, implored my friend to stop what he was doing, and when I failed to convince him, I stole his secret notes and hid them where I thought no one would ever find them. Well, because you stole them instead of him keeping them safe, that's why the, the world wound was open, because you stole them, pages were found, and that was what led it's your fault, Kenny. They killed Kenny. They did. You bastards. <laughs> your friend is alive. Is there anything you would like to tell them? Anything I want to tell him. What is there to say? That I regret what I did to him, even though I'd do it again? That I've never had a better friend? Tell them that in all my life, I never had anything more delicious than the spiced mold wine we used to drink together in his tower. What will happen to you now? Who knows? I've been the prisoner of a horrible demon lord for thousands of years. Will I join the river of souls like everyone else? Will I stand trial before Phrasma? If I do stand trial, where will I be sent? I do not know the answer to any of these questions, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever happens cannot be worse than what I've already suffered. Now that you're no longer bound by the spell, can you tell me why you were captured? What purpose did you serve in Arresh Kagal's plan? Arresh Kagal forced me to play this game of questions and answers with travelers, but she never told me the reason for my imprisonment. I can only tell you my theory. I think that all of this, the riddles, the talking ghosts, that appear in tr strategic locations which was designed to whet the curiosity of those of those who reach for the unknown in other words it was bait 
and the bait was meant to lure them here. It is possible that she had another goal in mind. Faceless Sphinx finds pleasure in subduing powerful seekers of knowledge. And my friend, the one you call the storyteller, was a powerful archmage like any other. Perhaps Arash Kagal believed that he would enter the heart of mystery to save me, should the promise of great knowledge fail to sway him. I would be the perfect bait to lure him into the trap. If that was her plan, things didn't go the way she hoped. Even the most cunning demon lords make mistakes. Your freedom awaits. Farewell. Farewell to you too, adventure, and thank you. Let's see if I can sneak around. We solved the riddle. So, mask. Plus 20 insight bonus to all saving throws. Wow. Okay. That is not what we thought it was going to be. Plus 20 to all saving throws. That's huge. That'll actually come in handy against uh, a Relu, or not a Relu, uh, Naticula. And there are four potential masks. Okay. A slightly useful trinket. Yeah. Just a wee bit. fast healing. Also, the downside is not happening since you won't be going to Arash Kagal's domain, at least not until future DLCs. Okay. I'll allow it. Begs the question though, can you dimension door down to that lower floor you area you saw? It's a good question. Might have to try it.
can't see her at all. gets lots of killing blows, so. a good belt for him. Maybe we can do that. But. save actually it's hard save wait unknown uh oh <laughs> I like the sound of that ok 
cannot dimension door. So no. Maybe another solution would have sent me sent you down there. Maybe. Yep, time to play with the masks. Let's see what we can do. I was worried that that was gonna like mean it was like a corrupted save or something so to the nameless ruin first pieces. That's right. Ah, uh, back when I didn't pick up everything and yeah, we, can, we now have the storage space to just carry everything infinitely. Well, pretty much at least. Yeah, they hint to the minor puzzle. That was this. That was very disappointing. I remember. All right, quick save it. 